This is a tutorial video showing you one method that you can use to collect data that will allow you to calculate the rate of a chemical reaction. In this video we're going to look at how to measure the rate of a reaction that experiences a volume change because it produces a gas. The rate of a chemical reaction is its speed or how quickly it's going. In order to calculate rate we need two pieces of information. Firstly we need to know how much reactant is being used up or product is being made. And this could be expressed as a mass in grams, a volume in centimetres cubed, or an amount in moles. And then secondly, we need to know how long this process takes, usually in seconds. Once we have those two pieces of information, we can complete a calculation to work out what the rate of a reaction is. We're now going to look at how you can actually get that data. You'll meet many reactions within GCSE chemistry that produce a gas, and we can measure the rate of these reactions by collecting the gas, seeing what the volume is, and measuring this over time to calculate the rate. There are two key ways that you can do this. In the first method, you use a piece of equipment called a gas syringe. Gas syringes allow you to collect and measure the gas directly, so they're very accurate, but also they're often fragile and quite expensive, so lots of schools don't have easy access to them. What you're more likely to have done instead is collect gas over water. This involves using an upturned measuring cylinder full of water and a delivery tube that comes from the conical flask where your reaction is happening into that measuring cylinder. As the gas is produced, it will displace the water and push it out. So by reading the size of the gas bubble on the measuring cylinder, we can determine how much gas has been produced. In this video, we're going to look at the reaction of magnesium strips with hydrochloric acid, which produces bubbles of hydrogen gas. I start by measuring 20 centimetres cubed of acid using my measuring cylinder. This needs to be the same every time I complete the investigation, as the volume of acid should be a control variable. I pour this into my conical flask, and the narrow neck of the conical flask means I can attach a bung and a delivery tube to collect the gas. I'm going to put this piece of magnesium into the acid, but first I need to sort out my delivery tube. This is going to go up and inside the measuring cylinder full of water. So as the gas is produced, I'll be able to collect it, it will displace the water and I'll be able to read off the volume. Starting from zero. Now this next bit is a little bit tricky with just one pair of hands, but I start the stop clock, add the metal into the acid and then attach the bung. And then every 15 seconds, I'm going to look at my measuring cylinder and write down what the volume of gas collected is. We're now going to fast forward. Eventually I can see that all of the magnesium has reacted and no more reaction will take place, so I stop the reaction. There are two things to bear in mind when you draw the results table for this reaction. One is that your units should only be in the header of the table. You should never have any units in the body with your actual data. The other thing is it's important to include the volume at time zero, as people often forget and miss this row out. Now that I've collected my data, I can plot these onto a graph to make it easier for me to identify trends. It's still important to identify what the units are, and these are listed in the axes labels on the graph. You may be asked to draw a line of best fit, and this should follow the overall pattern of your data. Here, my data are forming a smooth curve, so my line of best fit should also be a smooth curve. You can see here that my first reading was actually quite low, and this is quite common for this experiment, because chances are some gas was lost while I was trying to put on my bung, so that first reading may not have been accurate. I don't want to force my line of best fit to go through that piece of data, I just draw a curve that follows the general shape of the data. You could be asked to calculate a mean or overall rate of reaction for this reaction. In doing so, it's important to identify where the reaction actually stopped. Although I took another reading after 105 seconds, actually no more gas had been produced in this time because all of the magnesium had been used up. So in calculating the rate, I want to go from where the graph becomes flat and plateaus. So to work out the mean rate, I need to know the volume change and divide this by the time. Here, my volume change was 34 centimetres cubed and the amount of time was 90. And I can use those numbers together to calculate the mean rate. 
If you're taking the higher tier GCSE exams, then you also need to be able to identify what the rate of reaction is at one particular timestamp. For instance, here I might be asked, what is the rate of reaction at 75 seconds? In order to do this, I need to know what the gradient of the graph is at this point, but this is quite hard to do for a curve. What I need to do is draw a tangent. That's a straight line that touches the curve in just one place. By calculating the gradient of this tangent, I can calculate the gradient of the curve. Now, obviously in the exam, you would have a proper piece of graph paper with all the intermediate lines, so you'd be able to be a little bit more accurate than I'm going to be here. But I'm going to judge that that tangent is showing an increase in volume of 15 centimeters cubed, and that's taking 60 seconds to happen. So the rate at 75 seconds will be 15 divided by 60, which is 0.25 centimeters cubed per second. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this a useful tutorial for how to measure volume changes in a chemical reaction and use this to calculate rate of reaction. If you haven't already then don't forget to watch part one where we examine mass changes. And if you found this useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC chemistry videos coming soon.